Good morning, folks. It's May 1st, around 10 a.m., and we have an amazing update. Huge rocket looks set for uncontrolled re-entry following the Chinese space station launch. Now, we're talking about a long March 5B core stage, which is likely to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere in the coming days. Now, coming out from Helsinki this morning, China launched the first module for its space station in orbit late Wednesday, but the mission launcher also reached orbit and is slowly and unpredictably heading back to Earth. The Long March 5B variant of China's largest rocket, it successfully launched the 22.5 meter Tahani module from Weichang Thursday local time. Tahani separated from the core stage of the launcher after 492 seconds of flight, directly entering its planned initial orbit. Designed specifically to launch space station modules into low Earth orbit, the Long March 5B uniquely uses a core stage and four side boosters to place its payload directly into low Earth orbit. However, this core stage is now also in orbit. Oh my, that's not good, kids. Uh, because it is likely to make an uncontrolled re-entry over the next days or weeks as growing interaction with the atmosphere drags it back to Earth. If so, it will be one of the largest instances of uncontrolled re-entry of a spacecraft and could potentially land on an inhabited area, including a major city. While the odds are low, the possibility is there. Most expandable rocket most expandable rockets, first stages do not reach orbit, and this is what's the rarity here. They're just below orbit velocity, and they re-enter the atmosphere and land in a predetermined re-entry zone, typically in the middle of an ocean where there is no one. Some other larger second stages perform de-orbit burns to lower altitude to reduce time in orbit and lower the chances of collision with other spacecraft or to immediately re-enter the atmosphere to a known drop zone. There had been speculation that the Long March 5B core would perform an active maneuver to deorbit itself, but it appears to not have happened. At a WeChang press conference Thursday, Wang Ju, commander in chief of the Long March 5B launch vehicle stated that this second Long March 5B had seen improvements over the first launch, but a possible deorbit maneuver was not stated. So all of this information is based on speculation and, we're, and us actually watching the object because we do have the telemetry and based on this graph, well, it looks a little bad. Ground-based radars used by the US military to track spacecraft and other objects in space have detected an object and cataloged it as the Long March 5B rocket body now designated as 2021-035B, the roughly 30 meter long, five meter wide, long March 5 core stage is in a 170 by 372 kilometer altitude orbit, traveling at more than seven kilometers per second. A possible amateur ground observation of the rocket core showing regular flashes suggests that it's tumbling and is thus not under control, which makes sense because the Chinese government, well, they said it, they didn't mention it being under control. The first launch of the Long March 5B also saw the first stage reach orbit and make an uncontrolled reentry six days later. Reentry occurred over the Atlantic Ocean, according to the U.S. Space Force 18th Special Control Squadron. Had the event taken place 15 to 30 minutes earlier, debris not destroyed by the heat of reentry could have landed on U.S. soil. The incident drew criticism from NASA Administrator Jim Burdenstein. Now let's talk about the unpredictable reentry. Where and when the new long March 5B stage will land is impossible to predict. The decay of its orbit will increase as atmospheric drag brings down it into more denser and denser atmosphere. The speed of the process depends on the size and density of the object, and variables include atmospheric variations and fluctuations, which are themselves influenced by solar activity and other factors. The high speed of the rocket body means, which is seven kilometers per second currently, means that it orbits the Earth every 90 minutes. And so a, a tiny change, just a few minutes in re-entry time, results in re-entry point thousands of kilometers away. So this is a big one. The last one missed everything. Will this one miss everything? 
Now the long March 5B core stage orbital inclination of 41.5 degrees means the rocket body passes a little further north than New York, Madrid, and Beijing, and as far south as southern Chile and Wellington in New Zealand, and could make its re-entry at any point within this area. The most likely event will see any debris surviving the intense heat of re-entry following, falling into the oceans or in uninhabited areas because the probability is 90% that that will happen. But there's a 10% chance that it could hit a populated area. The risk remains of damage to people and property. Space flight observer Jonathan McDowell told Space News that the previous long March 5B launch saw the most massive uncontrolled re-entry in decades and the fourth biggest ever. The long March 5B core stage is seven times more massive than the Falcon 9 second stage that caused a lot of press attention a few weeks ago when it re-entered above Seattle and dumped a couple of pressure tanks on Washington state. McDowell said he hoped China would have an have enhanced the core stage to perform a controlled deorbit after separating from Tahani. I think by current standards, it's unacceptable to let it re-enter uncontrolled. Well, duh. Now, since 1990, nothing over 10 tons has been deliberately left in orbit to re-enter uncontrolled. The Long March 5B core stage, without its four side boosters, is thought to have a dry mass, or when it's empty of propellant, of 21 metric tons. That's insane. Colger Craig, head of the Space Safety Program Office for the European Space Agency, says from their experience, there is an average amount of mass of about 100 tons re-entering in an uncontrolled way per year. This relates to about 50 to 60 indiv individual events per year. It is always difficult to assess the amount of surviving mass, the number of fragments, without knowing the design of the object. But a reasonable rule of thumb is about 20 to 40% of the original dry mass will hit the surface, which in this case is just about eight metric tons falling to earth at terminal, terminal velocity. You guys remember Skylab? Yeah, it did the same thing over 40 years ago back in July. Components made of heat resistant materials such as tanks and thrusters made stainless steel or titanium can reach the ground. Surviving objects will fall vertically after deceleration and travel at terminal velocity. 40 years ago, NASA Skylab space station did the same thing. Now here is an artist mock-up of what Skylab did and potentially similar to the long March 5B rocket. Different parts will fall in different places and the ground footprint will be massive. Here, Skylab's ground footprint was 2,000 kilometers. The largest and most famous incident was the 1979 re-entry of NASA's 76-ton Skylab, whose uncontrolled re-entry scattered debris across the Indian Ocean and Western Australia. A nighttime re-entry could make for spectacular viewing, as with the recent re-entry of the Falcon 9 second stage, with debris fortunately not causing harm. China's 8-ton Tiang-1 space lab made a high-profile uncontrolled re-entry in 2018, while the successor, Tiangong-2, was deorbited in a controlled manner in 2019. What is happening here in China? They're dropping bombs and they don't care. Space agency, agencies should be held accountable. They should not allow these types of uncontrolled re-entries because they are putting people at risk. And I... I don't know about you, but I did not volunteer to be in the uncontrolled re-entry risk zone. Did you? Boom. Hope you got something out of the video. China, China, China. It's always China. We love each and every one of you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe. Oh, eyes to the skies. And that's boom. To uncontrolled re-entry.